Hey writer friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Holly. I'm a writer aspiring to be a published author. And in today's video, I will be telling you how to write an author newsletter. So guys, I am so sorry for not having a video for you guys last week and I've been coming out with like my usual Tuesday one and then a bonus one on Fridays, but last week I didn't come out with any and I know I didn't come out with one uh, this Tuesday, but between like all of these crazy changes and ups and downs and lefts and rights happening with the closure of the hospital I'm working at and then searching for townhouses to rent. It's just been chaotic and I've pretty much been describing my life as the this is fine meme. So if you don't know what that is, I'm going to insert a picture right now so you can see it, but it's a dog just drinking coffee in his kitchen and there's just fire everywhere and he's just like, yeah, this is fine. So that's me. But anyways, thank you for your patience and thank you for understanding. This video was highly requested by you guys, so thanks for that suggestion. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you already have an author newsletter and if not, if you wanna start one. So we all know how important author newsletters are to help you build a list of loyal followers and have a direct way for you to be in contact with them. Now, whether you already have three books out in the world or you're just working on outlining your first novel, having a newsletter is important. But you may be wondering, what the heck do I put in a newsletter? Even if you don't have any books out, it's still important for you to have a newsletter. So I have tons of tips for you. So let's dive right in. So first off, I will share all of the things that you can put in a newsletter if you do have books out, because obviously you can share all about your books. This can include everything leading up to your book's release and beyond. And so these things include sharing your cover reveal, a book trailer, first chapter sneak peek, release day news, any sales that you're having, paperback or audiobook releases, because usually people either will release a hardback cover first or a paperback and then maybe a hardback later. You can also include any giveaways you're having for ARCs, which are advanced reader copies, or if you're having any signed copies. The list goes on and on. These next few things that you can include are helpful if you have a book out or if you're working on a work in progress because it's good for both. So these things include any quotes that you have from your manuscript, any character reveals such as names or pictures or any actors or actresses you think would play that character or any character bios. Of course, having the title reveal or the genre reveal of that novel. And kind of same as I said for if you already have a book out, you can also give a first chapter sneak peek for your work in progress, but I recommend making sure that that chapter is very, very polished and edited. You don't want to be putting out like a first or second draft chapter because that's what your readers are thinking that they're going to get. And if they don't know that it's an unpolished first chapter, they're going to be like, this is horrible. Like, I don't want this book. So make sure that it's your very best if you're going to post that. And you can also include aesthetic boards for your world and characters. All right, now onto things that aren't book related. So for any sort of kind of writerly things, you can share your author platform. So of course, all of the links of the websites that you're on, or you can share any author platform updates such as now you're on Twitter or now you're starting a YouTube channel or you just launched your website. And you can include any social media challenges that you're taking part in such as Instagram um, writerly challenges, either weekly or monthly or any Twitter chats that you're a part of. You could talk about the current stage of the writing process that you're in, whether you're brainstorming, outlining, drafting, editing, or gathering query materials to start your publishing journey or you could talk about if you're actually in the publishing process. You can give writing tips and inspiration, whether, whether that is writing quotes or sharing links to good blog posts that you read recently or even blog posts that you wrote. You can share your favorite writing websites or any apps that you recently found that have helped you and any services that you have used that you recommend, whether that's editing services or critique packages. You can also list whether you're seeking betas or critique partners for your manuscript. And this is a great way because like you already have these people that are following you and following you along your journey with your work in progress. So they're probably already interested and would love to hop on and be a beta reader. And you could talk about any conferences or retreats that you attended or will attend or any book signings that you're going to be going to. On the authorpreneur entrepreneurial side of things, you can obviously talk about any services that you have, whether it's editing services, website services, critique services, or if you have any products like workbooks or books. 
And then readerly things that you can include are your Goodreads list, your TBR list, so the books that you will be reading in the upcoming month, or you can also talk about books that you just finished that you like. That's what I do. I like to write down um, a list of all of the books that I read and then I link it to Goodreads with my review. Um, and some people, they only pick a couple of their books that they read last month that was their favorites. And so they'll do a little bit more in-depth review about that. You can also list a couple books from your TBR and then pull your newsletter subscribers and ask them which book you should read next. And last but not least, you can include things that are happening in your real life. So any sort of updates as far as, you know, your personal life, if you're willing to share that, or you can just talk about some of your favorite music that you've been listening to, some favorite TV shows or Netflix shows or movies that you've watched recently, or even any of your favorite products or foods. And what I like to do is have a table of contents at the beginning of my newsletter so people get an idea of what's included in the newsletter. And then also I have my a little short bio at the end. And lastly, I've got a couple newsletter etiquette tips for you guys. So first off, you do not want to spam your newsletter subscribers by sending them an email every day or every week. I usually post once a month and some people can um, send emails like twice a month if there's like special news, especially if you have a book release or like a special on your services or giveaways that you're having, that's okay. You just don't want to spam people where they're not going to open it because you're sending them newsletters too many times. Also, don't make your newsletters super long because your readers will probably stop halfway. And you want to stay cohesive with your newsletter, so make sure that you're using the same template every month or every time you're coming out with a newsletter. You're using a similar theme to what you post on your other social media, and that if you're having that little bio at the end of the newsletter, that that picture's the same across all of your other social media platforms. And also that you're staying pretty consistent throughout your newsletter. So if you're gonna come out with a monthly newsletter, make sure that you pick those key things that you want in the newsletter and that you're gonna have those as kind of like your staples every time. Now, obviously I threw a lot of ideas of things that you can include in the newsletters and you obviously don't want to slash can't put everything in your newsletter. So what I recommend doing is checking out the authors and writers that you follow that come out with newsletters, see how they design theirs and see what you like about them. And so you can emulate those newsletters. All right, you guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you found these tips helpful. Please let me know in the comments down below what your favorite part of any authorly or writerly newsletters are. Please give this video a big thumbs up and click subscribe to support my channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!